Josh Harvey, Fox Sports, and Big Red Report. Here with Mario Gomez, publisher of the Fresno State site on the Scout.com network. Mario, thank you so much for taking the time. We really appreciate it. Hey, no problem, Josh. Thanks for having me. Yeah, not a problem. Four new offensive linemen up front for Fresno State. Uh, the same uh, situation that Nebraska is actually dealing with. Uh, just tell me about uh, their progression in that first game and kind of what were your thoughts, uh, you know, now coming into week two. Well, it really wasn't four new offensive linemen. There was just one returning starter that played in all 13 games last year. Um, the other four started at least in one game, and they played together against Nevada last year. But coming into the year was a, a new unit as far as them working in the off season as starters and heading to the first game. They didn't miss any practice time. They didn't miss uh, any bit of uh, game prep at all with injury. So they were completely healthy. But, uh, however, the starting center, Richard Helopico, who got a lot of playing time last year when four-year starter Joe Bernardi was injured, um, went down in, in the first half against Cal, did not play in the second half. So that moved the starting right guard, Leslie Cooper, over to center and shifted right tackle Austin Wentworth to right guard and brought in the redshirt freshman Cody Wickman uh, to right tackle. So uh, it's a little bit more hectic now this week because it's not only uh, some new linemen in there, but you have guys shifting around and you have a whole different unit that maybe got about 20 to 30 snaps together in fall camp. But now well, they'll have, you know, of course, three, four days of prep work heading into Nebraska. But uh, it's a whole different environment against that big Nebraska defensive line. That crowd's going to be a factor. So uh, it's a, a little bit, a little bit more of a challenge for this young group. The, the one thing, though, is they got the practice time. They know what they're going to do. But Leslie Cooper, you know, being a senior, is going to have to step it up and leave it off into line, make the right calls. But the left side is still solid with Matt Hunt and Bryce Harris. The right side, uh, they did okay in the second half against Cal. But uh, the, the young freshman, Cody Wickman, gave up a couple plays, a couple sacks. And I think that's the fear that if there's some breakdowns, they don't want Derek Carr to take a lot of unnecessary hits. So expect a lot of running. And that should help that offensive line gel in the first half against Nebraska. You mentioned Derek Carr. Uh, he made his highly uh, touted debut last Saturday. Kind of uh, what did you think of his performance and kind of uh, what did the coaching staff you know, think and, and kind of say this weekend? Well, it's uh, you know, kind of a hit and miss performance. You know, completion-wise, I believe 21 of 33. But a lot of passes were thrown behind the line of scrimmage. And give Cal credit, they played them very well. They didn't allow the Fresno State receivers to uh, really make any plays after the catch. It was pretty much, you know, uh, tackle and uh, that was it. They, they could not make anything uh, go forward. Uh, as far as going vertical, they had the one pass to Devin Wiley with 56 yards. Uh, you know, Derek looked like a veteran on that play, you know, checking down. So he, he definitely doesn't look like a, a, a guy making his first start. He's able to go through his progressions. But in the second half, it was a totally different ball game. Really, very tough for him, I think, to get in a rhythm with the new offensive line guys shifting over. You know, he, he made he made a, a few mistakes trying to press, uh, I think, uh, trying to make some plays. He, he overthrew one receiver and uh, under, underestimated the DB speed and ran underneath it and caught that for, for a pick. So uh, I, I think if he graded, you know, Derek Carr graded himself as an F because they didn't get the win. The coaches, meanwhile, still have a lot of faith in him. But like I said, it's a different ball game against Nebraska. Uh, one thing against Cal, they did not establish the run early enough, so there was no play action. They attempted, I, I think, no play action passes. Uh, a lot of stuff was, was quick smoke passes, quick screens, and they, they went deep maybe about four or five times. So against Nebraska, I think they're going to try to establish the run, maybe try to get some play action in there. But above all, they got to get Derek comfortable with that offensive line. Uh, I think when they watch film, that they saw Cody looking give up some plays, and Cody is, is going to get a little bit better. But in this game, I, I think they they might have to roll out the pocket to give Derek some time if they want to pass the ball. So it, it's going to be a a definitely different type of ball game this week. But you know, Derek, I, I think is going to build on his performance. I think the team will play better, but they're going to be playing a lot better opponent this week. Now I got to be honest, I haven't watched all the the Cal Fresno State game from last week. I've just seen bits and pieces. But it, it looked like Fresno State at times had a, a little trouble keeping Cal quarterback Zach Maynard, uh, I guess, under wraps. He uh, got out of the pocket a few times. Uh, another quarterback with uh, athletic ability this week in Taylor Martinez. You know, what is that Cal defense, or I should say, what is that Fresno defense doing to kind of maybe uh, tighten that up a little bit? Well, 
unlike last week, you know, for the front of the defense knows what Nebraska is going to do. They know it's going to be the triple option. They got to, you know, it's all assignment football against Cal. Uh, you know, you look at Phil Cal and Jeff Tedford's, you know, first seven, eight seasons in, in Berkeley, it's pro style, north, south run and play action pass. Uh, quarterback's going to, you know, make plays with his arms. Only going to run if he has to. Uh, when Zach Maynard in there, they showed a lot of different looks, came out, shotgun spread. Uh, they didn't use any no huddle, but they used some pistol, which threw Fresno State off, and, and the zone read really threw Fresno State off. That's where Maynard got all his runs. He never really kind of scrambled out of the pocket and got yards. It was basically all zone read. He had two big runs of his 56 total yards, 43 came on one, and it was just not playing assignment football. Fresno State was really, you know, predicated on stopping the run, and no one really had assignments on Zach Maynard this week. You're going to have a guy spying Taylor Martinez. You're going to have a guy spying the pitch man. And you're going to have the defensive line and linebackers cracking down on the dive. Uh, I would probably probably uh, refer this more kind of like what Fresno State defended Nevada last year when he faced Colin Kaepernick. I think Taylor Martinez is kind of the same quarterback. I don't think he's a, a quite the same thrower as Kaepernick, but definitely a dynamic player that can make plays with his legs. And Fresno State's going to have to keep a guy on him. But uh, as we've seen, you know, Fresno State played Texas A&M in 2007. Big Javorski Lane was, was a big man in the middle. It's the dive plays have always killed Fresno State. They, they've done well in containing Kaepernick when they played Nevada and when they played Austin teams. But a lot of times it's been the running back that, that's gone up the middle, whether it's just a new guy getting his first start or, uh, or a veteran. It doesn't really make a difference. It's just Fresno State, they key on the quarterback too much. They've always been suspect to the dive and, and to that play up the middle. So I think Nebraska, I think Taylor Martinez, you know, might be held in containment, but if Fresno State gives it big plays, I would expect more to come from the running backs instead of Taylor Martinez. I think a lot of focus would be placed on him, but if you may, but I would still expect Martinez to have at least you know one or two big runs that could go for a touchdown or definitely set up scoring plays. Talking with Mark Gomez of BarkBoard.com, part of the Scout.com network, and Mario, uh, just talk a little bit uh, about this non-conference schedule, and I'm curious to see what Fresno fan, uh, Fresno State fans feel about it i mean you got some tough opponents between california you go on the road to nebraska old miss boise state i mean that's a that's a pretty decent non-conference schedule i would probably say up and down one of the best in the country kind of what are fresno state's fans thoughts on the on the non-conference uh, part of the season this year well it's split down the middle a, a lot of fans like the schedule a lot of the fans have been following Fresno state for many years Remember the days of Jim Sweeney and they'd play like Oregon State would be your marquee game out of conference. And that's when Oregon State was one of the worst programs in the country in the Pac-10. Uh, now the schedule, I think a lot of fans want to see it toned down because Fresno State really hasn't done that well against it. Uh, they haven't beaten a ranked team in, in since 2004 and they beat number 18 Virginia in the NPC Computers Bowl. Uh, starting with USC in 2005, they've lost, they've lost 12 straight to teams ranked in the top 25. So they've been accustomed to playing, you know, good teams on their schedule. Last year they played at Ole Miss. They hosted Illinois. They hosted Cincinnati. They got two out of the three. Uh, this year it seems a little more daunting because Boise State's not a conference game. It's a non-conference opponent this year because they're in the Mountain West. But that's probably the best team on the schedule uh, along with Nebraska. But, you know, Boise State's had no trouble winning in Fresno. I think fans kind of wanted to see that one because it's it's a – it's a rivalry, even though Fresno State's only won one game in the series since they've both been in the WAC. And for the Nebraska game, I think for the fans of the know, realize that's a two for one. Nebraska's going to come to Fresno in 2014, and you really got to schedule those if you want to have you know big time opponents come to your home. You, you got to go twice to Nebraska, and they're going to go to Lincoln this year, and again I believe in 2015 or 2016. So I think the Nebraska game is set. I think the one that kind of rubs people the wrong way would maybe be. Uh, a lot of them point to Nebraska, but you, you got to play it. If you got you got a two for one, you got to go for it. The Cal game was at it last minute as a 13th game uh, and a, and a not, and a neutral field. That was a huge payday for Fresno State. That was a, a nine hundred thousand dollar payday for a, a trip that was just you know two hours you know north of Fresno. You had about twenty thousand Fresno State fans among the thirty one thousand in attendance. So that game was a given. So I think a lot of fans are focused on the Nebraska game, but in reality, that's set in stone. Ole Miss is, you know, really kind of beat up on Fresno State last year, but that's a home game. And then San Diego State at the end of the year, not really your glamorous opponent, but a you know, longtime rival, definitely a team that could beat Fresno State. So I think a lot of fans are 
kind of rubbed the wrong way. I think there's too many BCS teams on the schedule with a young team. But uh, going into the season, if you looked at it, if Fresno State came ready to play, you know, the Cal game is a game they could have competed and tried to win. The Ole Miss game being at home is a game they should be able to win. Uh, and San Diego State is a game they should have a chance to win. I think you looked on it, it's like you knew Nebraska and Boise State were the two ones you penciled loss in. But now I think after the loss to Cal, a lot of a lot of fans are kind of, you know, scared about the schedule because if they get hammered by Nebraska and if they don't get things back together, you got to play Ole Miss and Boise State back to back and and past those two games, you got Utah State who played Auburn very tough and should have won that game, you know, uh, down in Alabama. So you have quality teams on the schedule that are also in conference that fans are worried about. So it, it's just kind of a. Uh, it's it's one of those catch twenty two. They want to see the games, but they don't want Fresno State to get buried. And quite frankly, if Fresno State comes out of Nebraska really beat up, I, I think a lot of fans get really turned off by the schedule. Mario, before we let you go, just maybe a couple keys to this game to, for Fresno either either to pull out a victory or to keep it close, and kind of maybe give us your prediction. Well, Fresno State in this game is going to try to have to establish the run game uh, for for various reasons. One to keep you know, car, uh, healthy, you don't want him taking a lot of hits. You want to create, I think, manageable third downs to let him be able to make some plays with his arm. Fresno State averaged like third and not almost nearly 10 yards uh, every time they were in a third down situation. They had 14 of them last week against Cal. They only converted two of them. And it's one of those situations where Fresno State's not going to have a lot of success in those same situations against Nebraska. Uh, for the Bulldogs to keep it close. They used a formula against Cincinnati two years ago. That's when they had Ryan Matthews at running back. You know, Robbie Rouse is good, but he's not quite Ryan Matthews. Against Cincinnati two years ago, they gave Ryan the ball, I believe, 38 times. They really controlled the, the tempo of the game and kept you know Cincinnati's offense off the field and kept it close in the fourth quarter with a chance to win. It's going to be similar. You know, Nebraska's offense is not quite uh, like Cincinnati's dynamic. And when they had um, – uh, kind of that spread attack, but Nebraska can score points. But defensively, Nebraska is a totally different team. It's a better defense, better up front. Uh, it's it's really going to be up to the Bulldogs to try to control the tempo, to to try to establish some drives, and then on defense, Fresno State has to like play a sign of football. They, they got to have a guy on Taylor Martinez, and they got to stop the dive. And hopefully, they can control the tempo. Where if you if you continue going back and forth, you know Nebraska is going to make their plays. You know they're going to score their points. But if Fresno State can keep it within two scores in the fourth quarter. Then I think that's when you can start making your, making a taking some chances, either going deep or using the play action if you establish the run to try to get back into the game. So uh, in this game, I think if Fresno State can protect the football and establish some sort of run game, you know I, I think it'll be you know within two scores in the fourth quarter, and at that point it could be where Fresno State loses by seven or loses by twenty one or more, depending what happens. Because we see with football, you could be driving down to tie up the game, and one turnover makes it a, a two score game. And, and I think this one, Nebraska is going to have the upper hand. But I think Fresno State will be in a position at some point in the second half where they could make a play or two that get them into the game, maybe even a chance to tie it up. But ultimately, again, I think Nebraska wins this by at least two scores. That's Mario Gomez of BarkBoard.com. Mario, thank you so much for taking the time. We really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me.